Welcome, welcome on this beautiful Sunday morning. I'm Reverend Karen Einhaus, and I am so grateful to be here with all beloveds, here in the sanctuary, here online in this space that we are creating, in this space where we issue the invitation over and over and over for our hearts to be attuned through words, through music, through one another. And so before we look into what is our gift to give, who is this I am that we are saying to ourselves, I invite us to take a moment and look around. Look around in gratitude if you are here in the sanctuary, if you are at home, for the gifts that life has bestowed upon us. Say good morning, recognize a love, a memory, a joy, a beauty. And let's just allow a minute or so to be filled with gratitude. Thank you. Thank you. I am not 100% certain that the talk that I have prepared for today is going to be the talk I'm going to be giving. <laughs> and, and over the last four years or so, I have learned to be okay with that, to trust that whatever it is that is moving me is moving those who listen as well that whatever it is that brings me to tears because the veil is so thin to feel the divine, that you feel that too. Because we are all one. There is no separation. There is one power, one presence. We say it all the time, and it is moments like this when we are moved to tears for the honesty in which one has given their gift, as we just witnessed Ceres does. And the divine groove, that honesty touches us. And so those words that there's only one fade away and we feel it. There's no question. There's no question that where I seemingly end and you begin, those physical borders melt away. They soften. And we are free and we are invited and we have the confidence in those moments to just give our gift, to just be who we are. A magnificent manifestation of that which has always been and will always be. Eternal loving kindness eternal grace. And then we have those moments of that deep connection where we feel that place within because everything that has been layered around it has just been ripped off or melted away and we are just Love, but just love. And I think that the challenge of this human experience is that 
in that openness, in that, oh, I can feel it. Human messiness happens, right? Plans that were well laid out. We had a plan to have a beautiful booth at Pride with sunshine, and people were coming and learning about this wonderful teaching. And then what happened? Nature had a different idea. Yeah. And yet, and yet, what is amazing to see when life doesn't work out the way I thought it should, what rises up? What rises up? And how much can I remain in that space of knowing that it is all going to work out in this knowingness that there is only one? And so we have a different experience, sometimes an even better experience. and not have my humanness step in and start having conversations. So let's breathe. Let's breathe into that. The talk that I had prepared for today, and I think it still works, it's really about the realization that the more we can remember that we are one in nature, the easier it becomes to give our gift. Think about a flower, beautiful flower. I don't think a flower takes any time to think, oh, I so much rather would have been a rose or, or maybe a sunflower, and yet I became a dandelion. Flowers don't do that. What do they do? Flowers give of themselves. They share their beauty and they don't ask, um, I don't know, are you worthy for me to share my beauty with you? No. <laughs> oh, there's somebody, they are worthy. Here's my beauty. Flowers don't do that. They just give of themselves. And that is really the essence, I believe, of what the New Vision Center is inviting us over and over and over into. And that is what this talk is about. How can I let go, and I is the collective I, this is the question I invite you to ask yourself. How can I let go of any limiting beliefs so that I can freely give my gift, this gift of the I am. How might I do that? How might I remember that in nature, everything is in its own rhythm, right? It gestates and it grows and it falls away and it grows. Uh, think about any plant goes through that often annually. Snakes have been coming up lately as we're talking about our pet blessing coming up. <laughs> Snakes do that, right? They shed their skin. When it gets too tight, they shed the skin and become something else. Um, nests are being built and then they fall apart and they'll be built someplace else. And every human goes through this rhythm of nature. We have it within ourselves, in our families, in communities, here at the New Vision community. It's this rhythm of becoming and then being. Where becoming is adding to it, learning something, expanding, and being is really this time of letting fall away what doesn't serve anymore. 
And this constant expansion and corrosion, that is what rubs away those protective layers that we have placed around our heart, around that space of pureness and grace within. And the more we become conscious of it, the more we mindfully allow that rhythm and recognize that rhythm, the easier it is to recognize, oh, oh, I am in one of those moments where things are just falling away because they don't serve me anymore. They don't serve the highest unfoldment of my soul anymore. And the human in me says, no! No! I want that. I am not ready to let it go. And that, beloveds, is where suffering and pain enters. So let us take a breath. And recognize that this beautiful idea of becoming and being really shows up often as messiness in our human lives. And that that is okay. Mark Napo says it this way. This is the purpose of love, of truth, of spiritual practice. Spiritual practice. To bring us to that lip of that sea where we feel that we are all one. To the very edge of that place where there is no separation. Where my joy is all joy. Where the pain of the world is felt deep within. And I was thinking, I love this quote because it talks about it. And I think we can really understand how love can bring us to that place, right? Love, when we experience that purest form of love, however we might experience it with a beloved, with an animal companion, with a stranger, with nature, wherever we feel that heart-opening love that brings us to our knees. It has the tendency to move away any um, protection that I have placed on my little heart. And the same with truth. If we hear truth, if it falls into the center of our being, there's nothing, there's nothing to add. It propels us into our heart space. And so does spiritual practice. It is a conscious decision that we make to meditate, to speak a prayer, to give an act of service, however our spiritual practice looks, so that we may feel that pure place within. Now, I have been thinking about what spiritual practice I could offer today that would help us or that might take us to that place. And I came up with one that I love. It is called The Blessing of the Seven Directions. It comes from the First Nations traditions. And it is the idea that we all are 
one with nature. And so the seven blessings honors the four cardinal directions, the east, south, west, and north. And then also above, which you may call heaven or cosmos or universe, or just above and below Mother Earth. And then it takes, and that is what's the important part, then it takes all of that, what has been blessed and called forth and acknowledged and accepted. And the realization takes place that all of it happens through us by giving ourselves to the world. And so I would love to do that right now. Is that okay? You want to do it? Yeah? So I will walk us through it. And I will not ask us to stand. When we do this outside, we often stand and face the different directions. I'm going to ask us to remain seated and in our mind's eye um, connect with those directions. And then we have um, pictures behind me, slides that give an expression of that. And at home, I had asked in the newsletter that you take a moment and identify from your favorite chair, where is the East? Because we always start in the East. And so let us begin. I invite you to soften your gaze. And in your mind's eye, face the east, the place of new beginnings, the place where the sun rises every, every day, every morning. And I invite you to take a look at your life and ask yourself, where in my life is this energy of newness, a new beginning, a new job, a new relationship, a new life, a new something. And just connecting with it, blessing it, feeling gratitude for it, and honoring the East for reminding us of the newness in our lives. And so we pivot 90 degrees to the south, the place of full expression. I always think about a summer matter that is alive. It might be, in your mind's eye, the full expression of some good, perhaps a relationship that is just full of life. Perhaps a, a job that you love to give your gifts and you are working for people you love and they love you and you're recognized and it is just a blessing. Where in your life is there an expression of the fullness of the sun blasting at the, at the highest point? And as those images come up, accept and bless them. As we extend our gratitude to the south. And we pivot 90 degrees and we face west. The place of conscious completion. The place where we are when we are in the beingness and letting fall away anything that is not life-giving anymore. It is the completion of perhaps relationship, perhaps the completion of dreams that were shared together, the completion of a chapter in our lives, 
And as we face West, we honor all the good that we have received and we let it go. And then we pivot 90 degrees and we face North, the place of great mystery, the place where we don't know yet. Perhaps we feel an inkling for a new direction. Perhaps a call has been placed on our heart and we don't quite know how it is manifesting itself in the world. And we honor that place of dark, comfort, warmth. And so we honor the North in our lives. And pivoting 90 degrees again, so we are facing East, but our focus goes down. Feel Mother Earth underneath you. Feel the blessing. The safety, the support. The beautiful, beautiful landscapes. Allow this to be your connection to nature. And feel gratitude for it. Mm, and lifting your consciousness up above to the cosmos, the heavens, that pure energy of connection with the allness of life. And notice that it is inviting you to bring that goodness in gratitude to your heart space. So I invite you to place your hands on your heart and honor the I am. The recognition that as we allow love, truth, or spiritual practice to move away any distractions. It is here in the center of our being that we feel the oneness. And we extend gratitude to the I am. And I invite you to come back into this room. <sighs> if you have a keep me sheet on the back of the keep me sheet, are those things written out? Use this spiritual practice, allow it to serve you in what Einstein says so beautifully. I think we have the slides because I, I didn't print them out today. <laughs> there it is. Our task must be to free ourselves by widening our circle of compassion to embrace all living creatures and the whole of nature in its beauty. And that, beloveds, is the invitation this week and every week to open our hearts to find the place where you feel safe enough to say, this is who I am. Where you are seen and heard and welcomed and loved for exactly who you are. I am so grateful we are on this journey together. Thank you. And so we take, we take all of that into 
the most awesomeness tool that we have here, and that is a spiritual mind treatment. And so we do exactly what we just did, right? We realize that God is all there is, the allness of life right here, right now. And as there is only one God and it is all encompassing, I am one in it. I have my being in it and it has its being in me. And so from this place, I claim and accept the goodness, the eternal loving kindness, the grace that is available, trusting that for my highest and best, all is given already. And so gratitude just bubbles up within me, a gratefulness for this now moment, for all of life. I let it go, I let it be, and so it is. <laughs>